Yeah, I'll always be a metalhead. They, nothing can take that away from me. Right. I mean, not jail, not people, not religion, not anything. I'll always be a metalhead. Metalhead, metalhead, metalhead. Metalhead, metalhead. Metalhead, metalhead. Metalhead, metalhead. Metalhead, metalhead. You're listening to The Great Metal Debate Podcast. Welcome everyone to a special episode of The Great Metal Debate. I'm Xander, and today all metalheads can finally rejoice. For the almighty Greek gods of symphonic death metal, Septic Flesh, has blessed us mere mortals with an album, Modern Primitive, with the 11th studio album and the band's discography, and they continue to perfect their sound with each release. It's hard to believe that Septic Flesh has been a band since 1990. For 32 years, these guys have been crushing the metal scene. In this review, I'm going to do something a little different. Instead of listing the songs track by track in chronological order, I have decided to mention all the singles put out first, followed by mentioning the rest of the songs on the album. I have been a longtime fan of Septic Flesh since 2008, when they released their legendary record, Communion. Two months ago, the band released their first single for the new CD called Herophant. It was a very well-directed music video that provided enough atmosphere to keep the viewer and listener fully immersed in the song. It begins with the most bombastic mix of symphony orchestra with metal that the band can muster. Another thing to point out is the chorus of the song, which features the very nasally singing of Sonoros Vanias. Let's address the elephant in the room. Full pun intended. The way the word hierophant is pronounced is he elephant. The style in which the song is sang makes it sound like Sonoros is saying the elephant. It's funny to me, yet still manages to be incredibly bad fucking ass. Spiros Antoniou, the harsh vocalist and bassist, is every bit as monstrous as he has ever been. He is a force to be reckoned with for both of his main talents. The next music video that Nuclear Blast Records uploaded was a song called Neuromancer. Sirotis isn't just the clean singer, he is also the acoustic guitar player. The first thing we see in the music video is him playing the instrument for a calm and soothing intro into yet another powerful song. After a few weeks, a lyrical video was added to the record label's channel. It was for the song A Desert Throne. The song starts out with the sound of a lovely choir before diving straight into pure metal madness. Another thing you will notice after a few seconds is the symphony orchestra working its way into a groovy guitar riff becoming one angelic sound. The demonic vocals make it an unholy fusion. There is a part after the first bridge of the song where the bass and the drums work together while taking turns playing against a single guitar chug in a very rhythmic pattern. It sounds very cool, though it is short-lived. This would be a great opportunity to point out how audible the bass is throughout the entirety of the album and the albums before it. If any album from these guys can hold a candle to 2017's Codex Omega, it is this one. On the day of this album's release, which was on May 20th, Septic Flesh had put out a second lyrical video for their final single, Coming Storm. After the one-minute mark, the music abruptly stops so we can hear the eerie yet beautiful singing of what sounds like a siren. This goes on for a few seconds before plunging back into the chaos. Drummer Kerman Lichner, or... Krim, as he is known on YouTube, delivers yet another outstanding performance in this track that blows anything he's ever done out of the water. I have watched his videos for years, and he is nothing short of fantastic. I also love the use of brass and wood instruments in the song. You can really hear those horns braying alongside the violins in some parts. The choir is a pleasant buildup to Sardarus' appearance towards the end. It is truly difficult to pick a favorite song on this new album, but this song is definitely one of my favorites. I'm going to shine some light on the addition to the group. Saichon is the newest guitarist who has been added as a member of Septic Flesh since 2018, from what I can hear. He plays perfectly in sync with the main guitarist and keyboard player, Christos Antoniou. Yes, Christos and Spiros are brothers, and they are the two founding members of the band. Now let's talk about the other songs on the record. Let's start with The Collector. 
If you had your eyes closed during the song's intro, you could probably mentally teleport yourself to the most desolate sands of the sandy outskirts of ancient Egypt. The type of Middle Eastern Oriental music will take you to the cultured civilizations along the countryside. It reminds me a lot of what Carl Sanders from Nile does. Self Eater is an angry song, but it maintains a steady balance of aggression with a small choir of children singing in some areas. The ending of the song will give you chills too. Modern Primitives is guaranteed to get stuck in your head. You will find yourself singing the words Modern Primitive while at work. Psycho History is another catchy one but only because the second half of the song is only slightly repetitive, but not enough to drive you crazy. And finally, we have the last song titled A Dreadful Muse. The last song happens to be my least favorite song of this otherwise spectacular album, as there seem to be no real memorable qualities about the music. According to the band's website, the Digi CD has three extra bonus tracks, all of which are instrumental. The first two are titled Salvation and the 14th Part while the last one is just the instrumental orchestral version of Coming Storm. I guess I'm not missing out on too much. I mean, I would have the signed copy of the CD along with the t-shirt and the hoodie by now had I understood how to complete the pre-order process. What I'm trying to say has absolutely nothing to do with the music, but I'm going to complain just for a little bit here about their process of ordering their merch. It seems completely backwards to me. Never in all of my years of buying merchandise from a website was I provided with the band's banking information from overseas that I had to take to my own bank. That way I can make a direct fund transfer. It made absolutely no sense to me. And not only that, but the instructions weren't even clear. They didn't even tell me to do that on the website. They told me that my purchase was complete, even though I hadn't actually made a transaction. And so they gave me an order number. And then I thought to myself, what do I do with this order number? No one told me that I had to go to my own bank and fill out forms to have a direct transfer to their bank just so I can get their merch. I understand that it's probably for a security reason, but shouldn't they have just gone through PayPal like a lot of bands do? I don't know. It seemed a little sketchy to me, even though they're part of a major record label company. I still didn't feel comfortable doing something like that. Now that I have finished my small rant about the complexity of their online store, I'll return to praising the band. I love Septic Flesh. They are one of my all-time favorite bands. But just because they are one of my top favorite death metal bands does not mean that I have to give every single album of theirs a perfect score. To me, Septic Flesh might be slightly slipping out of their glory years, yet they still manage to keep their edge nice and sharp. Modern Primitives isn't my favorite album, but it's at least in my top five of the releases. With that being said, I'm going to rate this near masterpiece a fair 9.9 out of 10.